a detailed explanation of the primal vow of Amida Buddha. In his primal vow, the 18th vow, Amida Buddha made the following promise, quote, If, when I attain Buddhahood, sentient beings of the ten quarters who sincerely entrust themselves to me desire to be born in my land and say my name perhaps even ten times, should not be born there, may I not attain the supreme enlightenment. Excluded are those who commit the five grave offences and those who slander the right Dharma. End quote. As you can see, the primal vow contains two sentences, one explaining the way to be born in his pure land for all beings, and the other showing a so-called exclusion or exception from birth, aimed at a category of people. Also, there are various important elements in both parts which will be explained separately in this chapter. 1. The meaning of, if, when I attain Buddhahood, may I not attain the supreme enlightenment from the primal vow of Amida Buddha. 2. The meaning of sentient beings of the ten quarters. 3. The meaning of sincerely entrust themselves to me, desire to be born in my land, and say my name perhaps even ten times. 4. The so-called exclusion in the primal vow. Excluded are those who commit the five grave offences and those who slander the right Dharma. 5. Summary of the Primal Vow The meaning of, if, when I attain Buddhahood, may I not attain the Supreme Enlightenment. Generally speaking, Bodhisattva Dharmakara, that is, Amida before attaining Buddhahood, promised that sentient beings will be born in his pure land if they fulfill three conditions. One, entrust to him. Two, say his name. And three, wish to be born there. Then, in order to assure us that he will keep his word, he stated that if he becomes a Buddha and the beings will indeed entrust him, say his name and wish to be born there, and he fails to bring them to the pure land, should not be born there, then it means he does not deserve to be called a Buddha. This is the meaning of, if, when I attain Buddhahood, may I not attain perfect enlightenment. We can read it like this. If I attain Buddhahood and what I promise now does not happen, then you can say that I'm not actually a Buddha and I haven't attained perfect enlightenment. It is important to mention that all the 48 vows of Amida Buddha have the same opening. If, when I attain Buddhahood, a middle part with a specific promise and the same ending, may I not attain perfect enlightenment. So, he linked his attainment of perfect enlightenment or Buddhahood with fulfilling his vows and transforming them into effective methods of salvation for all beings. Perfect enlightenment is, for him, just a way of saving all beings, nothing else. Thus, if he cannot help them reach his pure land, if they entrust to him, say his name and wish to go there, then it means he is not a Buddha yet. However, the good news we receive from the mouth of Shakyamuni, the historical Buddha, is that Bodhisattva Dharmakara really attained perfect enlightenment, Buddhahood, and is now called Amida Buddha, which means that beings are assured of the salvation promised in his vows. Quote, Ananda asked the Buddha, has Bodhisattva Dharmakara already attained Buddhahood and then passed into Nirvana, or has he not yet attained Buddhahood, or is he dwelling somewhere at present? End quote. The Buddha replied to Ananda, quote, Bodhisattva Dharmakara has already attained Buddhahood and is now dwelling in a western Buddha land called Peace and Bliss, a hundred thousand kotis of lands away from here. End quote. Ananda further asked the Buddha, quote, How much time has passed since he attained Buddhahood? End quote. The Buddha replied, quote, Since he attained Buddhahood, about ten kalpas have passed. End quote. The fact that Dharmakara became Amida Buddha, and he is now dwelling in his pure land, shows that he keeps all his vows because to become the Buddha of infinite life and infinite light was promised in his twelfth vow and thirteenth vow respectively. And to have a pure land with supramundane manifestations that can naturally lead those born there to realize their Buddha nature and a resplendent light in which all the other Buddha lands can be seen was promised in his thirty-second vow and thirty-first vow. So, if those vows were fulfilled, it means that the rest of the vows were also fulfilled 
as otherwise there would have been no Amida Buddha and no pure land. Thus Shakyamuni Buddha's words are like, quote, Do not worry, Dharmakara became Amida Buddha. He and his pure land exist, and you can safely entrust to him, say his name, and wish to go there after death. End quote. In the smaller Amida Sutra, Shakyamuni reassured Shariputra on the same topic. Quote, the Buddha then said to Elder Shariputra, If you travel westward from here, passing a hundred thousand kotis of Buddha lands, you will come to the land called Utmost Bliss, where there is a Buddha named Amateus. He is living there now, teaching the Dharma. End quote. Amida is living there now, when he, the historical Buddha, was giving his teachings. And of course, he's living there now, when you are reading these lines, because he is the Buddha of infinite life. Thus, after confirming that Dharmakara attained Buddhahood, Shakyamuni no longer calls him in the three pure land sutras by this name, but Amitayas, which means infinite life, or Amitabha, infinite life. These two aspects, infinite life, or Amitayas, and infinite light, or Amitabha, are merged into the word Amida, which means the Buddha of infinite life and infinite light. His infinite life is, as I previously explained, the effects of the 13th vow which he made when he was Dharmakara Bodhisattva, while the infinite light is the effect of the 12th vow. So we cannot separate Amitayas or infinite life from Amitabha or infinite light, because these are the two aspects of the same Buddha. Shakyamuni explained this to Shariputra in the section 4 of the smaller Amida Sutra. Amida Pial. Quote, for what reason, Shariputra, do you think that Buddha is called Amitabha? Shariputra, the Buddha's light shines boundlessly and without hindrance over all the worlds of the ten directions. It is for this reason that he is called Amitabha. Again, Shariputra, the lives of the Buddha and the people of his land last for innumerable, unlimited and incalculable kalpas. It is for this reason that the Buddha is called Amitabha. End quote. 